Hello everyone. Today we have the honor to have with us Alex Potos. Hello, Alex. Hello, hello, Sebastian. Nice meeting you, and thank you thank for you. having me here. Thank you very much. It's an honor. And I would like to ask you, Alex, to introduce yourself and to speak a little bit about Kendo, the martial art that you have been practicing. Uh, so, hello, everybody. My full name is Kotos Alexandru. I live in Romania. I work in uh, the national security system. I have practiced sports for almost my entire life. I'm 28 years old. I practiced volleyball, skiing, martial arts, especially kendo and some karate when I was younger. I have been practicing Kendo and also Kudo, that's Japanese traditional archery, for about four years when I was a teenager. Uh, I did not uh, get proficient enough to say to get the belt, the first belt, the white belt, but it was beneficiary for me. I, I enjoyed doing it. I've uh, had since a child a deep connection to Japanese culture and so Kendo and Kudo was, was a, a natural affinity for me. Uh, so you have affinity for the Japanese culture? Uh, I'd say a deep appreciation for the way they devote themselves to doing their things. So they they have a deep connection in art, in martial arts, in sport, in business, to their work and their craft. And uh, they give everything they touch. Uh, it's like it's touched by divinity. It gets that sense of perfection. And that's what has always attracted me to Japanese culture. And uh, in my opinion, uh, I think they join together arts, martial arts, uh, our daily activity, everything is a uh, whole. Yes, yeah. the, there, is, there is a fusion between all aspects of life, which is implemented uh, directly in day-to-day -day activities. Yes, wonderful. And now I would like to ask you about the concept of Shirin Yoku. What determined uh, you to embrace it and how do you define it? Uh, Shirin Yoku actually is a concept that dates back thousands of years through history. Only the name Shinrin Yoku has been patented in Japanese architecture uh, during the 70s or the 60s, about like that. The, the ex express term Shinrin Yoku, but the concept of uh, healing oneself through nature has been dating since 4,000 years ago people, humanity was born in harmony with nature and I do not know any human being who do not, does not get some benefits from going in nature, uh, spending some time in the forest and so on. But Shinrin Yoku actually, as the concept uh, is presented, is actually translated as forest bathing. So practically scientists, psychologists in Japan studied the subject starting from the 40s to the late 60s, early 70s. And they found that uh, the color green, the oxygen produced in forests, the presence of plants and wild animals in our surrounding has a beneficial healing and calming factor for the human body. Moreover, the right hemisphere of the brain, when exposed to true nature, not artificial nature, we are not talking about parks, we are talking about true wild nature, becomes more relaxed and the nervous flow in the brain is more fluent when we are exposed to nature. So psychologists in collaboration with architects in Japan started implementing Shinrin Yoku as an architectural principle to heal the human body and the human mind and soul by inclusion of natural uh, aspects 
in constructions and uh, in our daily lives. Like uh, the, the Zen gardens, a reinterpretation of the Zen gardens that can be placed within our home. A small plant, an opening of the window to a green tree, uh, natural uh, or rustic appearance of uh, flooring and decking and so on. But the concept is not only in reference to architecture. The concept also has a deep root in craftsmanship, which is actually the reason why I embraced it. I started as a young craftsman in carpentry as a side hobby when I was 12 years old. I said again, I had an affinity for the Japanese way of doing things, although I do not use Japanese tools in my craft, I'm more prone to using Western type of tools. But the way they transpond nature into an object, not only reveals the sublime beauty of that piece of nature which we bring in our home, but they also cherish and value and give a new life to something that you take from nature. So, for example, if, if we have a tree in Shinrin-yoku, yes, that tree, when it is alive, we see it, we admire it, it relaxes us, we have a symbiotic relation to the tree, and uh, we feel fulfillment and connection. But at the end of the tree's life, in a responsible manner, if we harvest the tree and uh, process it and maybe transform it into furniture, use it as a construction or uh, use it, I don't know, uh, chopsticks for eating, a bowl for eating, anything that can be, or a sculpture, an artistic sculpture, that we take that wood and transform it, Shinrin Yoku, in craftsmanship uh, puts the basis of some principles of conserving the true nature within the object. In For yoga, example, there is a concept of one life transforming in another life. Yes, the reincarnation, the reincarnation. So practically this transformation is that you take an object from nature but preserve its rightful place. For example, if you, if you build, yes, you, you build a house and you put the, the posts of the house which sustain the roof, always the bottom part of the post will be where the root of the tree was and the upper part where the, where the crown of the tree. So we keep things in the natural position. And by keeping things in the natural position, not only do they work in our interest, work with nature, not against nature, but also there is a resonance created by, by the, the touch of, of the object, by the, by the feel. For example, uh, let's, uh, let's say uh, about uh, leather crafts. So we have le leather, animal leather produced. If that leather is, uh, is tanned using natural methods, like acorns from the oak tree, it will it will have a whole different feel if we wear it on the body than if you tan it with chemicals. So there were studies in this area and uh, our body, I can say, resonates to nature. And I find myself that, that by bringing nature in my life and uh, giving my life back to nature and spending time in nature and with harmony to it, is actually the only way I found for me that works to cope with the daily stress of the urban aspect of my living and my professional aspect of my living. So wonderful, so wonderful. So you give many answers and it's beautiful saying that you give yourself back to nature. This is so great. And do you know some other similar currents? Can we draw a parallel between other currents and Shinrin Yoku? Uh, definitely, yes, we can. Uh, Shinrin Yoku has its roots, let's say philosophical roots, in uh, Japanese Taoism, mostly. 
So we can draw a religious parallel between Buddhism, Taoism, maybe also Christianity in the naturalist, naturalist Christianity aspects movement in America. Also the Protestant movement of Christianity in Europe that have a deeper focus toward craftsmanship and dedication to work can also have a parallel, but we can also draw a parallel in sense of the benefits this principle give us. So there are many ways of freeing one's mind. We have martial arts, we have what you practice, Tai Chi, which is a balance of the outside and the inside. We have, uh, we have uh, tribal behavior. We have music that resonates with this principle. We have arts. We have, in also we have poetry. So this principle is not something like a single thing. It's, it's found and uh, it is included in many aspects of our spiritual and uh, practical life. So when we say we follow uh, the principles of a martial art, in some aspect, we are following principles of Shinrin Yoku. If we are a religious person who dedicates oneself to good, to cherish, to, to love your surrounding, to care for the things you have been given by life, principles found in Christianity, in Buddhism, everywhere, you are respecting Shinrin Yoku because you are integrating yourself with the surrounding and trying to find harmony. So a little bit like the Chinese idea, concept of Kung Fu. Maybe, yes, also Kung Fu. For Kung Fu, I, I have a, a small uh, bracket to put. Kung Fu tries to find harmony, but Kung Fu is something that takes energy from outside and transforms it within. This principle mediates the energy inside with the energy that already exists outside. So if I go to a place of tranquility, like a forest or a lake, I cannot take the energy from the forest of the lake to fill the void inside me. I must lower or uh, synchronize my feelings to the place to be in harmony. Because if I take something from that place, I will create unbalance. So, that is, the, so that is the con condition for, for the, the inner resonance with the outside. Not to take, but to adapt yourself to the environment. Much more like the Taoist concept of life. Much more like the Taoist concept, yes. And if one wants to embrace the path of Shinrin Yoku, what do they have to do? Do they need to change their diet, their lifestyle, in your opinion? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say they have to change their diet. But there is a change in lifestyle, not by embracing it. Because if you embrace someone, at one point you have to let go. I like to say, not embrace, to live by it. If someone wants to live by this principle, then changes will occur naturally as long as there is a little bit of interest and effort. For example, regarding diet, yes? Uh, we have the food that we eat from the supermarket, from the grocery store, and so on. By this in some way we help economy by purchasing things. But an aspect, for example, of Shinrin Ryoku, it's logical, I'm not a farmer. I cannot produce food for my entire family. But for example, I can take a small, uh, a small flower pot and plant one seed of tomatoes in my balcony, in my apartment. That seed will grow and it will be it will be mine, it will be out of my own hand, and some of my energy and my happiness and my joy will be given to that plant, and at the end when it's ripe, I can eat it, 
and I've given something to nature and now I take back. Nature gives something to me, I give it back. So small things like this, like planting a flower, like uh, cooking your own bread, like uh, raising a chicken, small aspects like this that keep you in touch with nature and not taking everything granted from the shop or from the store is one step regarding the diet. But lifestyle changes, the most important lifestyle change is uh, not be wasteful. To not waste time, to not waste energy, to not waste resources. The deepest principle of Shinrin Yoku, of harmony with nature, is not to waste. Everything we have is limited. Even the energy we have is limited. So we have to not be wasteful, to work with society, to work with ourselves and not against it. That means we should feed ourselves with happy thoughts. We should feed ourselves with challenges and with success, not with grief of something that we were not ready to tackle at the moment. For example, if, we, if I was never in my life a good gymnast and I cannot sit in my hands or on my head, I'm not ve very good at this, but I'm not sad about it. I know that, that nature and God gave me something else. So I do not spend time investing in trying to sit on my hands. Rather, I spend time doing what I'm good at. So we channel our energy not to be wasteful and be responsible with our own capabilities, what to expect from society and what standards we have regarding society and how we can create by our presence the change that needs to be done in our surroundings. So the change is always first within and the exterior will follow. Nature adapts to ourselves. And so, you, are, you are speaking about harmony, about joining together nature and human. And this could be a path of wellness. Can, bring, yes. can this bring us happiness as well, in your opinion? Definitely. Definitely. So I, I'll, I'll tell you one example from my life, which I think speaks for, it, speaks for itself. Uh, I was gone from my hometown since I was 14 years old. But I grew up in a place, so uh, I lived in a flat, not in a house. But the, the apartment block was surrounded by a forest. So it was literally in the middle of the forest with only some small access road. Uh, every time I past the border of my city to the, to the neighborhood where I lived, when I went home, there was a change. There was a change that you can feel. You can feel it in the taste. You can feel it in the air. You can feel it visually. It is something that is, is impregnated inside me because the visualization of nature surrounding my place of living was a place that channeled happiness for me. But it's not the only place. That's what I'm trying to, to, to tell you. It's not the only place. It's not so important because it's home. I did high school in a similar place. There was like a boarding school exactly built in the middle of the forest near a lake. I finished high school 10 years ago. I'm still going to the place and feel exactly the same sensation. Taste, feel, air, everything is special to that place because that place is in harmony with the surroundings. Recent now in my life, I got married and it happens to be that my parents-in-law have a house again in the middle of a forest. And each time, weekend after weekend, after a hard day's work, I go to that place, I cherish the place, I go and see each and every tree if it's healthy, 
I see if I can pick something up. I see if I can do something good to the place and the place stabilizes me and gives me the energy and the happiness necessary to go to another week's work. So yes, including nature in our lives and adapting our lives to nature is one of the sure paths that leads to happiness. And if someone has a hardship in his path, in his life, do you think that uh, following the principles of Shirin Yoku could help them to balance and to improve their lives? I think that one doesn't matter the principles, but I'm talking about hardships. The biggest problem with ourselves when we encounter hardship, grief, sadness, uh, some uh, dissatisfaction is ourselves. So there we need to work because, for example, uh, we take the most common uh, situation of sadness in our world. It's death. Somebody dear passes away, yes? We feel a void because that person left our world. But we choose to fill that war void with sadness, with thought that he is not amongst us, with the, with the memories we had, instead of filling our soul with energy to carry on his legacy. For example, let's say grandfather passed away. Grandfather was a blacksmith. Maybe I can cherish his memory and find the balance and inner equilibrium by going to his workshop, starting to, to go on with what, with what he was done. Let's say we have a friend who passed away and he had a wish to climb a mountain. We can go climb that mountain instead of him to cherish his memory. But that means not wasting time being sad. That means doing, being active, being proactive and taking the memories of someone who is not within us and letting them live through you and travel alongside you to your path. And also by motivating the ones surrounding us to do the same. Another example, something at work. Maybe you applied for a job and didn't get it. It should not be a reason of grief. It should be a reason of joy because now, if you did not get the job, you know exactly what do you need to do to get it next time. You know, I need to change this. I need to work harder. And that energy which builds up as sadness we can transform it, we can adapt ourselves to our surrounding and use that energy useful, not be wasteful. That is the main principle of Shinrin Yoku. Oh, Do not be wasteful with your time. What a healthy concept of life. And now uh, one question that you already gave the answer almost. It's uh, what would determine someone to embrace one thing that you think that will convince everyone to live in this way? If not for themselves, for every single human that will be to come from this day forward. By living by this principle, we do not do it for us. We do it for everybody. It's the most simplest way to be selfless, to, be, to, to actually live a selfless life and to give everyone, if we are not wasteful, if we integrate our primordial medium in our lives, that's nature. And if every time we use our energy to produce something, not to lose something, then not only we will be happy, everybody else will be happy. So easily, it's not a path to your happiness. It's a path to bring happiness to everybody else. 
that's the main reason you should follow this principle. Everybody, it, 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 I tell again, it's not a principle. The same principles are found everywhere in the world, in religion, in art, in martial arts, everywhere you can find them. You have only to discover them in, and reinterpret them. Shinrin Yoku only gives them a name. I see. How wonderful, Alex. Thank you so much for all this information. It, it was amazing. It was um, life-changing. So once again, thank you and I wish you a wonderful day and we keep in touch. Hope to have you once again to, to discuss more. Thank you very much for having me again, Sebastian. I, I hope uh, it was good time spent for you as well, because for me it was. And uh, I'm open to meeting and discussing further topics anytime you can and we can find a mutual agreed period to redo this. Thank you again very much and have a beautiful day. You too.